this new South Africa of ours, makes me very happy to see him seated with me here to give me moral support. And as such, I want to present to him the same Quran, also with South African gold. I hope he'll accept it. There's only one little suggestion with these books. These are formidable books. They are encyclopedia. Would the tactician turn the microphone up, please? Thank you. Thank you. These are formidable books, encyclopedias in themselves, and it is not easy for a person to wade through it. So a humble suggestion, at the back of these volumes, there is a very comprehensive index. And I suggest to both of you, my brothers, that you browse through the index and the subjects that tickle you, look at those subjects, it will make interesting reading. Now, Mr. Moderator, you may start counting the minutes. <laughs> I have been very, very fortunate that Bishop Wakefield has made available for me these beautiful books while I was still in South Africa. There's one here, Popular Christianity, by Mrs. Christ Christine Booth. She was the wife of the founder of the Salvation Army. She has written this book. I read through it. Then these are the books written by the the bishop himself, the need of another re reformation, the Bible, basis of Christian security, all by the bishop, and this one here, Bible doctrine. And uh, since he had the courtesy and the generosity of sending these books to me, I made it my duty to read them. And. There are so many things which he says which, which I can't disagree, especially the ethical and moral side of whatever he says. You can't help agreeing with the man. But theologically, we are at variance. And reading the book, the foundation of Christianity, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the atonement, the vicarious atonement, that Christ died for their sins. On page 8, he reproduces the Apostles' Creed, what the Christendom are supposed to be believing in. One section of it says that this Jesus was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. This is part of the Apostles' Creed, as written in the book, that he was crucified, he was, dead, he was dead, and he was buried, and he descended into hell. Hell, you know hell? It's a Jahannam. He was descended into hell. Now, we Muslims, you know, we are not happy with that. With crucifixion, we say we can argue and debate. We can reason. But for Jesus going to hell, we say now there's only devils go to hell, but now this is what the Apostles' Creed is. And as I proceed further, on page 40 of his book, chapter 4, The Atonement, under a subheading, the bishop says, the necessity of the atonement, why it is necessary. And in column two, he says, all the perfection of the Godhead require a punishment for disobedience. Failure to exact the punishment would be to repeal the law and uphold evil. It would render God a liar. In other words, God must punish. The wicked or an innocent party, somebody must be punished. If he does not punish, if God does not punish, he lets you off, scot free, there is a, it would render God a liar. And in trying to prove that this is the theology of Christendom, he quotes that the necessity of the atonement is clearly thought 
in the word, meaning the word of God. And he gives biblical references. Among them is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, where the Christian, every Christian church or denomination, they have at the back of the mind this phrase, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is the foundation of Christianity. The justification for God Almighty coming down to earth as a man and having himself crucified for the sins of mankind. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 40. So, I said, now let me have a look at it. Let me read it. And I found this. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, as it was referred to. And I'm reading it to you. Behold, all the souls are mine, saith the Lord. As the soul of the Father is mine, so also the soul of the Son is mine, saith the Lord. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is the quotation from Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. And I take it, Mr. Moderator, my dear brothers and sisters, that we take this as read. You know when you discuss something in a minute, you have meetings, you say this minute is taken as read, and then we can go into corrections and explanations, but is this taken as read? Will you all agree, Bishop, what I read? Will everybody agree that we take that verse as read? We accept it that this is in the Bible. Now I might tell you that this verse, very short verse, this verse is only 27 words, 27 words. To that 27 words, I added another nine. 33 and a third percent I added to that verse. And I, I can tell you, no Christian can catch the joke. I mean, if it was the Quran, any one word that the person adds or deletes, you find a correction. Immediately. I added 33 and a third percent. No, it's not one third more. I added nine words to the quotation, and nobody catches the joke. And I'm offering, <laughs> I'm offering anybody who can even try to give me half a dozen, forget the nine. Half a dozen of those added words, which I interpolated. I interpolated into the quotation, this hundred Canadian dollars is yours. Come, come. Anybody, you can tell me, I, say I added nine words. I don't want you to give me all nine. Just give me half a dozen. And I give you this hundred dollars. Once before, I lost a hundred dollars to Jimmy Swaggart. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the same book. Same book of Ezekiel. So I had become allergic to it. I said, now nah, let me really see it and see. I want to offer another hundred dollars. Anybody? Anybody wants to take it? Nine words I have added. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. I'm reading it. Huh? Yes. What are the words that I have added? What I have interpolated in the verse? You want to say it again? Nine words I have added, interpolated, in, in this verse, which are not there, which are not in the Bible, but I added them. Just to show us, look, this is how our people, our, you know, our fellow brethren, fellow Christians, they make a religion out of the phrase, the soul that sinneth it shall die. But they won't know the whole verse. This is only a phrase in the verse. The, the soul that sinneth it shall die. Seven words, seven words out of 27. But now I added nine more to that. This hundred dollars is the going. Anybody, anybody can say, look, Mr. D, that this word is not supposed to be there. You uttered this, you uttered this, you uttered that. It's not supposed to be there. Hundred dollars for you. Anybody? No, I don't think there's any takers. You see, this is what happens. I have been listening to lectures, I've been reading books. 
and everybody quotes this phrase, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And from that, the whole of Christianity is created on the basis of this phrase. From here, the Christian jumps 500 years in history, from Ezekiel to Paul. He jumps 500 years. He doesn't complete the verse. He doesn't read the whole verse. No Christian, no Christian, I have come across in my 40 years of experience, ever know the whole verse. He only knows the soul that's in it, it shall die. From there he jumps to the book of Romans in the New Testament. From the Old Testament, he jumps 500 years into the New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, where Paul says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and everybody is a sinner. As such, everybody goes to hell. So now somebody must come and die for his sins. So who can be better than God himself coming down as man and getting himself crucified? This is the foundation of the whole of Christianity. But now I'm suggesting to you, my listeners, that after the phrase, the soul that's in it shall die, it continues. But, they say everybody has sinned and everybody goes to hell. Whether you label yourself as a Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew, anybody, unless you, Christ died for your sins, you believe that he died for your sins, you all go to hell. All have sinned. All, all means all. No exception. But amazing thing, the verse continues.